And we already have a few attendees jumping in. Thanks for being early. Uh, appreciate you all being here. And as we're getting settled, uh, we're probably going to wait till about the, the two to three minute after the hour to give it a start. Um, again, I appreciate all of you being early. We already have quite a few of you joining now, so we're really happy to have you here. All right, just hitting the hour. So we'll just wait a couple more minutes, let some, some more people kind of come on in. Filling up quickly. All right, now as you guys are all filling in, we are gonna start some polling just at the beginning to kind of see and gauge some of your expertise on what you know about EDI. Uh, so you'll actually see some of this polling come out throughout the, the whole session, but we're gonna go ahead and get started on this. Um, feel free to kind of answer at your own pace. Um, again, as we kind of move through these slides, we'll, we'll definitely uh, be moving through the polling questions, but a lot of this polling will actually help influence some of the discussions we have today, uh, as well as help kind of shape the ending of, of this webinar. So we want to make this as interactive as possible. Uh, so to those who are just jumping in, uh, as I mentioned about a minute ago, we are going to wait probably about two to three after the hour to get started, but there is a poll on the screen. Feel free to answer at your leisure, uh, and we'll start in just another minute or so. All right, we're already starting to get some answers. Looks like we have a lot of beginners, a, a few a few experts here, so that's good to know. Uh, hopefully some of that helps in some of our questions and polling later, but it looks like we've got a lot more beginners uh, than anyone else, any other section, so. I think I think we'll be in good shape to get through this webinar. All right, we're just gonna give it about another 30 seconds, and then we'll go ahead and get started. All right, let's go ahead and jump on in. I will keep the first poll up, uh, but to those just joining, uh, we'll be having a poll throughout this entire presentation. Uh, you will see about three to four of them come through. Uh, over the next 30 minutes. A lot of this polling is really going to help influence some of the discussion that we have and how we share some of the information that we want to talk about. So uh, first and foremost, I'm Kevin Jones. I lead our SMB customer success team here at SIN7. Uh, I'm really excited for you all to join this highly anticipated webinar. We're going to be talking a lot about electronic data interchange, or EDI. Um, we're going to go over best practices, the complexity of the technology, and really just be able to tell you how SIN7 works with EDI retailers as well as the technology. So before we begin, a few housekeeping items. Uh, we will be keeping all of the attendees on mute throughout the webinar. However, over the next 45 minutes, like I mentioned in the beginning, we want to keep this as interactive as possible. So we'll be polling you throughout. You also have the ability to ask questions. Uh, to do so, you'll just navigate to the right-hand side of the screen and select that Ask a Question button. Uh, we will be saving a majority of these questions till the end, but again, some of these questions and polling will help influence the discussions we have throughout. Uh, if we are unable to get to your question, we will be sending a recorded version of this webinar and we'll go through some of the questions that you ask and we'll be responding within a day. Um, so. Who is SIN7? I always like to start off with kind of who we are before we jump into anything. Uh, most of you hopefully know that SIN7 is a configurable out of the box SaaS software provider who is really passionate about helping product sellers thrive. We make it cheaper, faster, and easier for businesses all over the world to get their products into customers' hands. Each month, which is pretty outstanding, we do millions of sales orders uh, flowing through both of our platforms and this allows product sellers to spend more time on building their business and less time actually having to do the spreadsheets and in and out. Now, because of Sin7's desire to help the modern product seller thrive, we, we're committed to creating these educational uh, resources and content for you. This is why today we are excited to announce our first panel of subject matter experts to help us guide through the EDI. Now, who do we have here today? 
Today, I am fortunate to be joined by Maylene So. Uh, she's one of Sin7's very best, and she is our Omni Integration Product Manager. Uh, Maylene's been with Sin7 just shy of two years, and she's really who focuses on the architecture and design of our integrations for our Omni product. Uh, when she's not out there mapping roadmaps or designing product best to utilize your integrations, she enjoys baking and playing badminton, uh, and hopefully we do have some good volleys today. The next person I am joined with today is Francis. If you've ever had an EDI problem or placed a support ticket, chances are you've met him, you love him, you know him. Uh, he has been with Sin7 for five years, and he currently has the most in-depth knowledge of EDI workflows and expected responses. Uh, and when he's not fixing, he's also really into table tennis and, and volleying. So before we dive into the details and go through this webinar, I think it makes sense to kind of set the stage on what we hope to accomplish today. Uh, so Noel, if you could move onto that agenda page for us. Awesome. So the main objective here is to provide you with a basic understanding and complexities of our EDI technology, its potential in transforming business operations across industries, and how you as organizations can utilize this technology in running and scaling your business, as well as giving you some self-service best practice tips so you can respond to errors and respond to situations faster. Uh, throughout this webinar, we're going to explore the various components of EDI, including its architecture, standards, and protocols. Then we're going to dive into some of the benefits of implementing EDI, why you choose Sin7, and what that complexity of how Sin7 utilizes this technology. Uh, and then we're also going to aim to address some common concerns and challenges associated with EDI. Uh, we want you to be able to walk away from this webinar with a comprehensive understanding of how to overcome potential hurdles and help you guide through real-time error solutioning. So I'm looking at these polls. A lot of you seem to be in the middle of beginner and intermediate. So we're hoping that this webinar provides you some quick, valuable insights and actionable self-serving strategies. By the end of the session, we want you to walk away feeling empowered, understanding how Sin7 utilizes EDI and how you can take some of these best practices into your everyday workflow. So without further ado, I'm excited to get on this EDI journey. Uh, so please welcome, or please join me in welcoming Maylene. Uh, let's let's take it away. Thank you, Kevin, so much. Hi, everyone. I'm Maylene. Nice to meet you all. Um, so before we get started, let's just go through um, some terminology and acronyms that we're going to use throughout this webinar. Uh, it's just to get you guys excited, but also not confused. Um, so let's begin with EDI. What is it? Um, so it stands for Electronic Data Interchange. And like Kevin mentioned, it's like an electronic way to communicate information between different businesses um, via the file transfer mechanism. And how does this uh, messaging work? Um, so usually what happens is that uh, these files get um, distributed through an EDI fan, which is a value added network. So this is like a secure network that facilitates the communication of these messages between the different businesses. And then we have this EDI message itself which kind of like dictates uh, what tran transaction or what information is um, being transacted. So um, you'll see throughout the webinar, we'll talk a lot about purchase orders, we'll talk a lot about ASNs and invoices. So these are all EDI messages. And then um, the direction of these messages become important, right? Like whether you're exporting the messages or importing the messages. So for exporting, this is where the um, files or the information is sent out from Sin7 and to our EDI retailer systems. And importing messages are the opposite, where they send us information and we import these files into our system. Um, the next one you'll probably see here is about SECC labels. These are the labels that we put on the packaging um, before they get sent out to the customers. They often detail information around quantities, um, tracking numbers, and the products themselves. Um, and this is usually like a requirement from the EDI retailers. So they just scan the package and know what's inside. Then we have the advanced shipping notification, ASN. So as many of you may know or may not know, um, this is sort of like a notification that 
we need to send to the EDI retailers so that they're able to um, sort out the docking bays and the warehousing just to make sure there's enough space for these items before the delivery comes. And then the last two um, are just more of the EDI standards that have been established over um, time. Um, X12 is the American standards, and usually you'll see throughout the webinar um, like three-digit codes that represent messages, like, for example, the 850 will represent a purchase order, etc. And then the EDFACT is more of the standards used in Europe. So uh, let's just go through um, what does the electronic data interchange look like from a, a high level workflow perspective. Um, so as we mentioned, EDI is a mechanism used to exchange information. Um, it's been well established. It's been established since 1960. And over the years, like I mentioned, um, standards and protocols have been developed to better communicate uh, documentation and information for the supply chain processes. So here at SIN7, we provide native integrations to over 300 EDI retailers, including um, the popular ones such as Amazon vendor, David Jones, Nordstrom. Um, and one of the major workflows, um, as I mentioned before, is for these EDI retailers to send through product uh, purchase orders into our EDI van. And from the EDI van, SIN7 is able to import these purchase order files into our system as sales orders. And once we receive the purchase order, um, we will then send through an acknowledgement back to the EDI retailer informing them that we've received their purchase order. You know, one of the interesting things, we just asked a poll about why do people use SIN7 Omni EDI integration. Uh, someone actually said that they don't use SIN7's EDI, like, native EDI connection, which I think is pretty interesting, Maylene. Uh, most of the people did answer convenience, and I think we're going to talk a little bit on the next slide about how it's not only convenient, but what are the other benefits we provide by using kind of our own Omni integration. So hopefully the one person, the two people now who have not used our native EDI connection uh, can see some of the additional benefits outside of just convenience or price or timeline. So Melian, up to you. Thank you, Kevin. So in this slide, we'll be talking about the benefits of having a native EDI connection with an Omni. So apart from convenience, um, <laughs> And adding just to the convenience factor, everything's all in one system and have seamless integrations, not only just to your EDI retailer partners, but also we provide integrations to um, e-commerce marketplaces, uh, third-party logistics and shipping integrations. So this single view will allow like uh, a single channel for all your sales orders to come through. Um, and for it will help you better manage your supply chain processes um, for your products in a single system. Um, so with EDI, major documents, um, we're able to support major documents uh, for supply chain management, such as purchase orders, invoices, and ASINs. Um, these can be change digitally, so that eliminates the need for having spreadsheets or manual data entry, uh, which in turn reduces human error, like data entry errors. Um, but also uh, the information is more accurate because the human factors um, out of the question. Um, we at Omni also support the ability to, shed, uh, to set up an automatic scheduler. So the benefits of an automatic scheduler will allow real-time real data into our system. So an automatic scheduler will automatically poll for these EDI files periodically. And this will ensure that the files are processed and imported in a timely manner, uh, meaning that the data will almost be real-time. There's probably just a, maybe a minute or so for the processing to happen. 
Lastly, um, all our EDI connections are compliance certified. So what does that actually mean? So before your connections go live, uh, there's a round of compliance testing together with the EDI retailer. Um, this is a crucial element just to ensure that SIN7 Omni provides a robust um, mechanism for us to communicate information between the two different systems. So like I mentioned before, we've got two main standards that we support um, in SIN7 Omni, that's the X12 and the EDFACT. We also support um, the common EDI supply chain messages, such as the purchase order, ACN invoices, and acknowledgements back to the EDI retailer informing that they've re re received the information. Um, we also have, we also support other EDI messages. Um, there is a comprehensive list, um, but here are just some, some of them. Um, apologies, I think uh, there might be some lag in terms of the PowerPoint slides, but we can send you this information afterwards. It's a good thing that, you know, we, we understand errors. We're actually going to do an entire <laughs> section just on some technology errors. So uh, it's a good thing that we'll be able to talk through some of that. So, hey, technology. Technology. Hopefully <laughs> the next, ne next slide and um, going forward, the slides will be better. So um, let's cover more of a supply chain workflow um, in terms of how EDI works with Sin7 Omni. So we'll take the example of Costco. Sorry, there's just a little bit of lag there. So we'll take an example um, where Costco is our EDI retailer and they send through a purchase order to us. From there, Sin7 is able to import these purchase orders um, as sales orders and they'll appear within our EDI dashboard. Um, and once Sin7 uh, imports these files in, we'll also send through a functional acknowledgement back to Costco, informing them that we've received your purchase order. Um, from there, the sales order is ready for picking and packing. And whether this is done via your shipping integration or a 3PL, um, your, the sales order is picked and packed and the dispatch um, information is updated onto the sales order. And from the EDI dashboard, um, the sales order will then be ready for us to send through an advanced shipping notification to Costco, informing them that the delivery is about to come. And once Costco's received the ACN, they'll send through um, an, an acknowledgement back that they've received um, this notification. So a similar process can be done um, by sending invoices as well. So what I'll do now is I'll hand over to Francis and he'll uh, walk into some of these workflows in a bit more detail. Over to you, Francis. Thank you, Maylene. And hello, everyone. I'm Francis. I will be walking you through the EDI common workflows, how a purchase order uh, comes in, how we send an ESN, how we send an invoice, as well as show you a little bit about the EDI dashboard. Cool. So let's begin with how a purchase order gets sent from a retailer to Sin7 Omni. When a purchase order is raised, the retailer system will generate a purchase order file or an 850. This 850 file is then sent to SIN7's value added network or VAN, which is then routed and sent to your inbox where it shows as a file waiting to be imported. Now, when our schedulers run, so there are these uh, schedulers which run at scheduled intervals, which basically clicks on the import or runs an import function. Or if you like um, to click on those import uh, buttons, the sales order will then get processed and a sales order is created in SIN7 Omni. After this, a 997 or a functional acknowledgement is then generated 
uh, which is notifying the retailer that we've received the order as well as processed it. All of these actions happen automatically and does not need any human interaction whatsoever. Cool, so now let's get into the best practices for receiving purchase orders. So first, it is best to notify SIN7 Omni in advance whenever the retailer has a new store branch that they will be ordering products for. This is because address information in the purchase order um, may not be included in the purchase order, but instead the retailer will merely send the location number that they will be ordering products for. Without uh, this information, the delivery details of the order is not populated and you won't be able to know where, the, where to send the sales order to. SIN7 does maintain a central database of the store locations. However, SIN7 is not notified by the retailers. So it is best that you uh, forward any information about new stores to SIN7 Omni support. Second is to have an automated uh, scheduler. Uh, automated schedulers automatically import the sales order and send order acknowledgements for you. It is recommended that you have scheduled tasks to do the importing and exporting of EDS for, for you. Um, this is also to ensure that the retailers are notified that we've received the order. Third is to ensure that the barcodes of your products match what is being ordered by your retailer. So like um, with stores, in SIN7 Omni, the barcodes of the products are sent in the purchase orders. Um, these, um, this is what we use uh, to show what products are being ordered by retailers. So if these products are not matched, the product will usually come in as a non-stock product causing issues down the EDI process. Lastly, if you have received an order and you cannot fulfill all the items, it is best that you send a partial acceptance or by just rejecting the PO. Um, associated uh, file EDI files of sales orders are not linked if you create a separate transaction. So in SIN7 Omni, if you create a back order for the items you are unable to fulfill, it will actually cause an issue down the line. So it is best that you either reject or send a partial acceptance. Now let's move to the common issues with uh, receiving purchase orders in SIN7 Omni. First are with the missing orders. Missing orders are usually caused by the import function not being run just yet. So. Uh, the automated schedulers run at scheduled intervals. So if that interval is not there yet, some orders are not being picked up and it will not show up as a sales order. Second is that the stores hasn't been um, configured or we haven't added the store information in our central database. So it will actually uh, error out because SIN7 Omni doesn't know for which store that EDI file is um, being ordered for. Another common issue with um, orders is the unmapped sales orders. This is caused by a mismatch between the barcodes that are in SIN7 Omni versus the barcodes that your retailer um, wants to order from you in their purchase orders. Cool. So. That's all for uh, purchase orders. Perfect. So we did. So one of the things I didn't tell everyone is that some of these polling questions would actually be a little bit of a trick question to see how you're utilizing the software and, and potentially gives me some homework. Uh, we did 
pretty much come out at a tie with people that do use the automatic scheduler uh, with a few people not even knowing what the automatic scheduler was. So I do think there is some, some valuable feedback for me to take back as the head of customer success where we can really help kind of drive some adoption of some of these features and functionality that, that is actually free to you uh, and is something that you can take advantage. And Francis, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure the automatic schedulers are, are pretty configurable if they were to reach out to support. Yes, Kevin. So uh, the automatic schedulers are set at default intervals of one hour, but you can actually contact OmniSupport to configure that uh, scheduler to maybe uh, 30 minutes to 15. So it is up to you how you want that scheduler to be set up. Perfect. And again, it looks like I've got some, some work cut out for me to get to make sure that you all know how to take advantage of that. So, all right. Cool. On so to that, ASNs, my favorite. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> let's move on to ASNs. Um, but before that, let's just uh, briefly go over the fields that SIN7 Omni support will be adding to your sales order uh, page whenever you have, um, or whenever you want to integrate with an EDI retailer. Cool. So the first is the delivery ETD date field and the cancellation date. These fields are basically the delivery window. So it's when to send the order to the retailer. Next are the billing country, department number, store number and ship to DC store number. Uh, these uh, information indicates additional information on top of the delivery uh, address. And it's basically pertaining about the retailers receiving uh, store information. Lastly are the SSCC or serial shipping container code uh, label and the cartonization, which is at the line item uh, level. These indicate the number or code associated with the box of the items that the order, uh, of the order, uh, which retailers need in the ASN. So if these fields are not there, you have to make sure that they are there before you start transacting with uh, EDI. And if they're not there, contact OmniSupport so that we can add these uh, for you. Moving on, um, let's uh, talk about ASN. So after you received and reviewed, as well as accepted to fulfill an order, before you send the actual physical goods to the retailer, um, you need to send an ASN or the advanced shipment notification. Advanced shipping, uh, shipping notifications are required by the retailers uh, to make necessary arrangements such as uh, booking your deliveries into their warehouses or stores. Um, failure to send ASNs prior to the receipt of goods will cause your uh, shipments to not be accepted at the warehouse. Now, to send an ASN, you first have to dispatch the order. Uh, in SIN7 Omni, there is the EDI dashboard wherein you will see the send ASN checkbox appearing next to the order um, that have a dispatch uh, date as well as the carrier tracking and ASN. When you hit save, an ASN file will appear on the export box waiting to be exported. And then when SIN7's automated scheduler runs an export operation, or when you click any of that uh, export uh, buttons, the ASN will get sent to SIN7's value-added network and then from our value-added network over to the retailer. The retailer will then acknowledge the receipt of this ASN via a functional acknowledgement or a 997, completing the whole ASN uh, process. Once you've selected to um, 
send um, the ASN. There are the best uh, practices. So to send an ASN, it is best to deliver the goods in between the delivery windows because if you deliver too early or too late, the shipment arriving at the warehouse or the store will get rejected. Um, and then another one would be the missing uh, delivery information such as carrier, tracking code field, SSCC, and yeah, the dispatch date. Cool. So with now let's go to the common issues. So common issues with the uh, ASNs are the uh, rejections. So EDI retailers will reject the ASN if you're delivering outside of the delivery window. Also, if you've sent the ASN more than once, a notification will also automatically trigger from the retailer system to indicate that they've already received the first ASN. So that notification basically just tells you that um, the second ASN you've sent or resent has been uh, rejected. And then the missing key information such as carrier and tracking, like what I've said in the best practices, you always have to provide the carrier tracking as well as the SSCC because this information is what we sent in the ASN. The last and the final um, most common issue is the mismatch between what's in the 850 or the purchase order file versus what's in the ASN. So when a retailer orders a product via a purchase order, they send the barcode. And if the barcode that is in the ASN is different from what they've ordered, they will uh, send you another notification that, hey, we've ordered this product, but it looks like you've delivered us a different product. So that is, again, another common cause for rejection. Cool. So that's uh, it for the ASN. Perfect. So we did have a poll on this slide as well. Uh, this one is to keep in the back of your head. So one of the things that we recognize is that there does seem to be errors that come up a lot with the ASN because of potentially one of these common issues. Uh, we kind of assumed that a majority of you would not know where to check. So Maylene is going to cover this later, but uh, I think we, we, we gambled correctly. About 50% of the participants said they were not sure where to check to see if an ASN had been rejected. So keep this in the back of your head to when we get to the, the error monitoring, uh, but we are going to show you that. And for those that do know how to check, um, awesome. It, it's, really, it's really nice to hear that we do have some really technology savvy people. So cool. All right. Thank sorry. You, now on to invoices. <laughs> cool. Yeah. So now let's go to invoices. So finally, uh, when you've dispatched your products to the retailer, the very last workflow would be the sending of the invoices to the retailer so that you get paid. So in SIN 7, once a sales order is ready to be invoiced, from the EDA dashboard, you will have an option to select to transfer invoice now. And like with ASNs, after you hit save, an invoice file will then get generated and it'll be waiting to be exported in the EDI uh, module as seen uh, here. Now, when the schedulers run, the invoice file will then get sent to our van, similar to ASNs, and then from our van over to the retailer system. And then like with ASNs as well, the retailer will then notify SIN 7 via a functional acknowledgement completing the whole invoice process. So for best practices for invoices, because they can be for very large uh, orders, it is best to specify a payment term. So, oh, it doesn't load. Okay. So there is a field in SIN 7 Omni called the payment terms. You can spec, you need to specify uh, a payment term such as um, 
ETA 30, or basically the length of days before the retailer can pay for your invoice. Next is also to generate an invoice number. In SIN 7 Omni, to generate an invoice number, you just have to specify an invoice date. Now to the common issues. So retailers will usually reject an invoice if key information such as the payment terms and invoice dates are missing. And like with ASNs, oh, I might have overclicked. But yeah, like with ASNs, if the barcodes between what they've ordered is different to the barcodes that you've invoiced, their systems will pick it up saying that it's different that there's a difference between what's in the purchase order versus what you're invoicing. So so now we go to the EDI dashboard where most of the time you will be spending um, your time on SIN7 Omni. So in the EDI dashboard, you can see the customer PO number consolidated into one view. So in SIN7 Omni, when we receive a purchase order, it can be for uh, hundreds or hundreds of stores. And in SIN7 Omni, we consolidate that into an easy to digest view. And from here, you will see the number of stores, the delivery window, as well as the different workflows associated with each of your retailers. So the workflows are the 850s, and then you can see an, an 855 for some of these um, EDI retailers, as well as the ASN and invoice. Cool, so that's that for the EDI dashboard. Cool. Um, so thank you, Francis. Um, so what we'll be going through now is a section all about error monitoring. Where do you see the EDI errors and also what are the upcoming product initiatives around error monitoring? So there are a couple of places where um, EDI errors are shown in our system, understanding where to look and also understanding that different error groups will allow you to better manage your EDI integration and ensure your EDI files are transacted in a timely manner. So the first category of errors you see here are related to import errors. Um, so when an error occurs in the input section, you'll be able to see the error in red. So clicking into the error, um, you'll see more information on what the error is. Um, import errors most commonly occur um, because of connectivity issues and since even Omni is unable to pick up these files from the EDI van and process them into our system. So how do you resolve these errors? Um, usually with connectivity errors, um, the only way to resolve it is you can't, you, you just have to wait for a while and then try again and hopefully the connectivity um, will be better then. Um, other import errors like Francis mentioned um, will be like, there could be mismatches between information or um, like the stores missing. So we have no idea where to import the sales order in. The second group of errors are export errors. So these are related to um, errors when you send out the ASN, for example, and um, because of missing information, uh, like we will catch that upfront and alert you that these are errors on your ASNs. So for example, if your ASN is missing some carrier or tracking codes, um, you'll be able to click into the errors and see your ASN is missing information. So what you'll be able to do then is um, correct this information on your sales orders, provide the missing information, resubmit your ASN, and um, hopefully it'll get exported without further errors. 
the last category of errors um, are shown on the EDI dashboard. Um, so if you drill down into an order, uh, you'll see like a little number in red. So clicking into that, uh, you'll see what the error is about. So these errors are, are most common when these mismatches between the product information within Sin7 Omni and the information that was provided in the original purchase order EDI file from your retailer. So like Francis mentioned before, um, these are most commonly like barcode issues where there's a mismatch between the barcode information from your EDI retailer and Sin7. So you'd probably need to iron out these mismatches before um, proceeding. So what are some of the upcoming EDI product initiatives um, within Sin7 Omni? So currently, um, some of our EDI errors are very hard to track down, are very hard to detect, and our staff only knows about them when they're reported to us. Obviously, that's not a very good customer service um, thing for us to do. So in the EDI space, um, we'll be wanting to provide a more proactive support and preventative um, measurements to help improve your user experience, but also your support experience. So for the rest of the year, um, Sin7 Omni, we're going to put a huge focus in terms of error observability. Um, so this will allow us to detect errors earlier, as well as um, providing additional information for troubleshooting these errors. Um, just to make sure um, your EDI support and resolution times are better. So where uh, there are deviations from the observability baseline in the EDI space, um, there, this is a very big alert sign to us, informing that there are potential errors out there, and our support and engineering team will be on top of it and will able, be able to identify and resolve these errors before you see them. So um, on top of that, looking at key error trends uh, from our observability will not only allow us to address impactful errors, but also we're able to um, take on opportunities uh, where we can improve our EDI platform and therefore improve your user experience. So I'll hand back to Kevin now and he'll cover um, our upcoming EDI topics as well as um, the Q&A section. Perfect. Well, before we jump right into the Q&A and what we're thinking about covering next, I really want to thank both of you for being on here. I think, you know, even just as someone who's not the most technical but talks to our clients every day, it's so good to kind of think about, you know, Maylene, when you were going through that error handling and really understanding those error buckets, right? Is it an import? Is it an export? And then how we can follow up with everyone that's on this webinar today on how you can navigate to say, is it an import, an export, or was there a connectivity issue? And then that's going to help us pinpoint faster, solve it faster. Uh, so as part of the follow-up, I think we'll be, we'll be kind of diving a little bit deeper into that so that you can all, again, self-service a little bit more. So before we jump right into the questions, and we are starting to get a few, uh, feel free to start putting them in. We will be going through them. One of the things that we'd really love to do is provide additional training. I think, you know, Maylene, Francis, they both hit it on the head. The idea here is to really provide a better customer experience and allow you to get the knowledge and self-service that you that you that you need. Um, and that is one thing that we at Sin7 are committed to doing is putting the resources behind these. Uh, so some of the things that we've discussed, you know, internally are uh, just how to send EDI files. One of the polling questions that we asked, there were 57% that are unsure of how to resubmit uh, an EDI file. Uh, so it sounds like there's some education opportunity there. Another is really just navigating the EDI dashboard. Uh, we feel that that could be a huge service to our clients on how they can see the files that have been sent to retailers, how they can check to make sure that things have been acknowledged, uh, and really, again, identify errors before. And that way, we have a better I, we can jump into it a little bit faster. Uh, that's going to be the next one is really just EDI errors and focusing on those. Uh, that was another topic that we had. 
Um, and then we're also open to, to additional topics. Uh, we will be doing a 3PL webinar as well, uh, and then potentially an EDI and 3PL on how does the entire workflow work? And again, the complexities here at Sinsafin. Um, so now we're going to jump into the Q&A. Uh, you will notice a customer success at sin7.com. Uh, that goes directly to myself and my team. Feel free to send us uh, additional um, questions that you'd like answered or even additional webinars you'd like to see. Uh, it may need one more click. No, or Maylene. Oh. Hey, Hi. there it is. Wonderful. No, no, no worries. Uh, so we are starting to get some questions in. I think, you know, th there's a couple of questions that I would love to ask. I think one of the, the first ones is, you know, I think we actually touched this, the automatic schedulers, uh, how often they pull. Uh, so for the person who asked this, uh, right now it is set to an hour, but Francis was actually saying that if you were to reach out to our support team, we can actually configure that to be somewhat quicker. And hopefully, Francis, I didn't make that up. Yeah. Yeah, Excellent. Kevin's right. So the automatic schedulers can be configured, but it is configurable by support. So you do need to um, raise a support ticket for us to actually change the schedulers intervals for you. Um, you know, another one that is is probably something that we've we touched on a lot, but I think it makes sense for the whole group are what are the most common EDI errors that we see? So, um, um, yeah, uh, I'll, I'll take I'll take the first half. And Don't both of you get excited. <laughs> look, look at you, both jumping in. Yeah, I guess the reason why we're having this webinar is just to explain what the common errors are and what the best practices are to prevent these errors from coming through. So uh, frequently we get errors around, um, hey, why are my purchase orders missing within Sin7? Um, so like Francis mis uh, mentioned uh, that a lot of the reasons here are because, hey, look, um, this, the store that it's for is missing and we actually had a customer last week that had this problem. So they had a new store that they didn't inform um, Sin7 support and therefore when the EDI order came through, um, it just didn't process because we it had no knowledge of this new store. So just a reminder, when you know that EDI retailers got a new store, inform us straight away. Um, the, more, the, the sooner, the better. Um, another reason why we get missing orders are because the scheduler or you haven't clicked on the import button. And this is quite common, like you might feel that oh, it's quite obvious, but it's actually quite common. Um, the time for the scheduler hasn't elapsed yet, so therefore we haven't polled for these new orders coming in. And therefore the orders don't show up within Sin7. Would you like to add anything, Francis? Um, nah, I guess you've covered everything. <laughs> so one question I think that is, one of the questions that was asked, I think is actually just explains kind of the complexity of this very sophisticated, even somewhat antiquated technology. But do you, do either one of you think at any point EDI will be replaced by API? Mm. I think it's highly unlikely. Um, so APIs, although they're cheaper, they're faster, more performant, but however, they they are not as mature as EDI. Like I mentioned earlier, EDI has been established since 1960. So decades of refinement, refinement of standards, procedures, et cetera, means that we've got lots of suppliers and wholesalers um, having legacy systems that were designed to use um, EDI as a mechanism to exchange the information. So for them, it will be too costly um, to kind of like overhaul all the infrastructure um, to support API. The other reason is that API isn't as mature as EDI. So a lot of their um, the supply chain processes weren't designed when they um, did the API designs. As well as that, um, APIs often don't have any standards. And so what that will mean is that it will become like a costly exercise for you to integrate into an EDI retailer using API and then having that um, implementation repeated for a different EDI partner because there are no standards in place. Uh, so, 
So yeah, in short, I don't think <laughs> I don't think um, API will replace EDI anytime soon, just because of the maturity factor. You know, one of the questions that seems to be almost repeating, um, and we actually have someone who has a actual you know, timeline, they've connected David Jones and Seven, they're starting to do a 3PL. And while we're not really covering the 3PL, I think it does make sense to talk about, you know, what are the timelines, you know, are all EDI connections the same? Um, and then it looks like we can probably reach out to uh, you independently with your David Jones uh, and talk about next steps and getting you kind of going. But I think kind of an overview, and Francis, this is probably you, I think more time is better. Yeah, so whenever you want to decide to integrate with an EDI retailer, the earlier you notify us um, in advance that you are going to integrate, because not all EDI connections are built the same. Each EDI retailer could have a slightly different uh, workflow and responsiveness during testing. So yeah, the, the sooner that you um, notify us, the sooner we can assign it to someone to work on getting your integration built. Yeah, so the client that's doing the David Jones, if you send an email over, we'll submit the support ticket uh, and then be able to kind of get you timelines uh, once we understand kind of the, you know, more, I, I wanna say like more practical, right? Uh, so we can actually dive deeper into kind of your instance. So if you wanna send over some of the stuff, we'll, we'll get that support ticket started. Um, you know, another question I think makes sense uh, to, to ask now before we wrap it up, you know, what happens if an EDI retailer changes their their version or requirements? Yeah, so like with getting integrated with a retailer, it is always best to contact Omni Support uh, as early as you receive those emails from the retailers because we will then request your connection to be a recompliance because we will check what changes they will do on their end versus the changes that we will also implement our end to support those like changes in either a workflow or if they need a, a specific message to be sent on uh, the EDI files back to their system. So yeah, uh, the earlier the better, send over a, a support so that a support ticket so that we can review it and then get the uh, necessary team involved. Awesome. Uh, perfect. Well, we are coming up. We do have quite a few additional questions, but we are coming up to the hour. Uh, so I do want to be conscious of everyone else. We did say this would last approximately 45 minutes. Uh, so if we were unable to answer your question, uh, don't worry. We will be answering them and sending out some responses. Uh, we'll also be sending a recording of this, as promised, within one business day. Uh, and then also feel free to use that customer success at SIN7 if you have additional questions or if there's something you'd like us uh, to present present in the future. Uh, Francis Meline, I'm really, really thankful that you were able to be here to help our clients kind of walk through some of this. Uh, I also have to give a quick shout to Noel, who has been our presenter today, uh, who's been kind of in the silent background, making sure that we go through these slides. So without him, we, we wouldn't have been complete. Uh, and we really do appreciate all of you coming from different time zones. We are as well are in different time zones. So uh, we appreciate you wherever you are in the world. Thank you, everyone. Have a good day. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone.